Hey guys, Tarek from Cyclone FPV, and I am getting ready to do a drone, um, a video on putting this drone together for this drone kit. And <clears throat> while the kit is designed, this particular kit is going to be for the Grand Oaks High School and the um, uh, Grand Oaks High School Drone Club uh, under uh, Mr. Tom Tanner and the uh, York a junior high uh, drone uh, program under uh, coach uh, Brian Stafford. The frame part of this is actually going to apply to pretty much anybody who gets this frame. Uh, so you can watch along. What I'm going to do the, different this time though is I'm not going to do the whole build in one video. God, it drives me nuts and I know it drives you all crazy too. So I'm going to piece this out, right? And the first part of this video, this is going to be part one, which is going to be the assembly of the drone, the frame itself, right? So let's just kind of get to it. And let's go over here. There we go. So what we've got right now is we're using the um, the E250 series frame. So I'm going to empty the contents. And the first thing you're going to notice when you open this bag is that everything is written in Chinese. Shocker. Not really though. So don't worry about it. Just kind of ignore it because you really don't need it too much uh, except on this side. So you've got Chinese on this side. Flip it over and you're going to be just fine. Okay. But the manual and assembly is really not that necessary. This is pretty, it's a pretty straightforward kit. First thing I'm gonna tell you right off the bat is these little pieces that come in this kit that are supposed to hold the arm up, uh, you know, from, from when you land, um, lose them. They're not needed, they're weak, uh, and they really don't have a purpose here. Uh, so get rid of those, okay? The second thing I will tell you is that the top plate, um, which is Oh, let me find that here. That's this piece right here, right? It goes with these little rubber standoffs, which I'll go ahead and empty for you. Um, you're supposed to put this on there and then you can put your GoPro or what have you on that. Okay, lose it because these are not very secure. You would have to put like a zip tie through it and then you're gonna have this bouncing, which really becomes a waste. So get rid of this too. And you don't have to throw it away. Keep it for extra parts for, I don't know, something fun, I guess. Um, or to just say you have carbon fiber parts laying around. I have no idea, but get rid of them for now and take those little landing pieces and put those in the bag too. We are not gonna use any of these and I would definitely recommend that you don't either. Okay, so that can be put aside. Now, let's get down to the guts of this, okay? So we've got our three millimeter arms right here. And as you can see, the way these arms are set, you have options for all kinds of motors to go inside these. So you can run anything from an 18 series to a 22 series on up, all right? Um, and so we're going to set those aside and we're going to look at this drawing real quick and let me just kind of show you what's going on. What their recommendation is basically we're going to go from the top plate and we're going to add our base plate and we're going to have a secondary plate with our arms in the middle. So the way the drawing shows you and I'm going to kind of assemble it somewhat the same way is this kit is going to be built something similar to this. Now this is going to be very interesting because this is your top plate and here's your two plates in the middle both of which, if I'm not mistaken, should be pretty identical. They are, all right? And these are pretty flimsy plates. They're not bad, but once you put it all together, it's gonna to be pretty strong. So what they're telling you is you're gonna use the four screws here, all right? So let's just go ahead and look at our screws first, figure out which ones we wanna use for what. So let's go ahead and empty our packets. All right, and just kind of keep them organized. Um, so just kind of set them aside. There's one set there, all right? And then this isn't a Ziploc bag, uh, and those are not plates, those aren't screws. Those are gonna be the lock nets. And then we're gonna use, these are the longer screws right here, okay? And so right off the bat, you can tell by looking at these screws, all right, that one is definitely longer than the other. And their purpose for that is, that means that one's gonna go through more layers of carbon fiber. And then you will need the locking nuts right here, okay? And you can set those aside and you'll need your standoff. So let's go ahead and just knock this out. The first thing we know is that this is your top plate. Okay, and the plate is identical all the way around, so it really doesn't matter which side you want to declare as front or back, which I kind of like that idea. So let's just go ahead and take the small screws, put them in through the top holes here, and you're going to have eight of them, right? So let me just kind of show this to you. So you have, sorry, you have holes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and uh, that's what we're going to be focusing on is the four on this side, the four on this side, and we're going to use the short screws to go into those and then to fasten our standoffs too. So just go ahead and knock this out. We don't need a screwdriver right now. We can finger tighten these with no problem. So let's just go ahead and twist tie them like that. We can use these screwdrivers later. All right. Okay. I'll finish this all the way around. This is an excellent introductory frame. Um, for people getting in the hobby that want to build their own, uh, for students, this is a great one because it gives you a ton of room uh, within the frame to um, put your components, which I'm really happy about. And I, I really thought this is a, a, a good idea and it's very inexpensive. 
very cost effective way to get started on building your first drone and it'll definitely grow with you for a while and then if you outgrow it or want something uh, down the road you're still going to have a pretty good frame to hang on to to come back to all right so that's our top piece right there we can set that aside now we need to lay out these arms right so what we know is the arms are going to go in just like this okay and in doing so, um, we're going to end up having to double layer them, double layer the arm like this, and then we're going to send a screw uh, through, and then we're also going to be coming from the top to get to fasten this top plate. We're going to come from the bottom to fasten the top plate, all right? So ideally, what you're going to be doing is you're going to take um, your top plate here, and you're going to, now, the way that they tell you to do it, which I'm going to say not to, um, is they actually run this screw through both pieces, and if you don't have a standoff available to make up this gap, you're gonna bend the carbon fiber in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just bolt the bottom piece here um, to, to make this work, and ideally the bottom plate would usually have a wider opening so the screw can go through the first layer, but this doesn't. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do this, knowing that I can send my screwdriver down to fasten the rest. So now you're gonna want your screwdriver, and of course mine is missing, I think it's on my desk, so hold on one second. And the reason I'm saying this is if you do not have something to make up for the gap here, you will end up bending the carbon fiber. Now, I have three millimeter spacers, and if you do, you can use them to, um, to fit this in. But uh, since it doesn't come with this, I'm not going to use them in the kit. But I am going to go ahead and show you how I would assemble this. And from there, we can make sure that you guys are good to go. So just go ahead and get these on here. And do not put the bottom plate on just yet and you're going to put this plate on first and since you won't be able to since you're not going to be coming back to tighten this i mean you can actually go through those holes to tighten this but i would just go ahead and use a screwdriver kind of tighten it now at least get it over with a little bit here we'll be good to go and uh, there is a piece here that I did not put on yet and I'll explain to you why I mean it's, it's up to you on how you want to run this last piece which is the actual um, camera frame so to speak and if you decide you want to do it you can always unscrew the top plate and put it on I'm not worried about it right now it's this piece here and it actually sits inside uh, and it'd be kind of late for I mean I would I, I would be able to add it in just a little bit and I'll show you how, but um, for right now, I'm not gonna worry about it. Now on the top piece, because that had that camera holder, these four circles indicate that this is the front because that's where that one, that's where that plate would go that we took out. If you wanna have a reference for front, I guess, in this area. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and fasten the bottom plate, okay? And since these are identical, it doesn't really matter where you put it. So let's go ahead and fasten the bottom plate. And to do that, we're gonna run one of the longer screws to the top here, and you've got these four sections where the arms go, these four screws, you can go ahead and just put the first one in like that, and go ahead and put the bottom plate on there, and once you fasten the first piece, you're pretty much good to go to finish this out. So let's go ahead and just fasten the first one. Okay. And now we can go ahead and put in the second one. And you're not gonna tighten this yet because you still gotta put some other arms in. Right, so let's just go ahead. But what we want to do is we want to get the arms to stop flopping all over the place. So once you put in two, once you put in two screws, you can kind of you can leave it loose. You don't need to tighten these, and these are locking nuts, so you have to use the um, you have to use a fastener to get that done. But now you can just go ahead and do the second arm. Okay, let's go ahead and knock that out. And again, we're going to do the same thing. Just run two. Let me line the holes up here. Just run two screws. There we go. Put a locking nut on that one. Okay, go to the next one. Just make sure you get it to line up. There you go, there's the second one. And the other reason I'm gonna tell you not to complete this build like this is if you're intending to obviously make the build, let me get 
this lined up, okay, and you're actually gonna put a flight controller and all that, then you're not gonna wanna do anything permanent until you put the screws in for the boards, the flight controllers. And again, and I'll show you this in just a little bit, but um, you're gonna wanna put those screws in from the first plate, the bottom plate here, not from the bottom. And I'll, again, I'll show you why here in just a second. So let me, um, let me finish putting these arms on and then I'll give you an idea as to why that is. But whatever you do, you're not really fastening this permanently um, until you're done. So that's why we're just gonna use the two screws. Make sure you get an idea of what the build looks like. All right. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> and then we'll do one more and tonight guys is well if you watch this video after tonight it's not gonna make sense but tonight is game seven of the world series astros versus the nationals and i wish i could be with my boys tonight but thanks to the well never mind i can't but i wish my my boys have fun watching it and i'll be texting you guys and trying to communicate with you throughout the game love you all very much and let's see the astros uh win one for houston uh, it is so far no team has won at home uh, right now so everybody's winning when they're not here or when they're not well when they're not at home so Houston beat the Nationals in Washington and the Washington beat Houston in Houston so this will be interesting since we're in Houston it's like an underdog even if you're at home all right sorry we're kind of veering off the topic here all right so we now have all four arms on all right, and for the for, just for the sake of kind of looking at what you got, this is your new frame, okay? Now, what I was telling you was you don't want this crunching right here, right? I mean, there, there's too much of a gap here, so you're going to want to do all your work and all the screws, put all the screws in, and then you want to fasten this bottom plate, all right? So until you're done putting the screws in, don't fasten the bottom plate. Now, the cool thing is, is that once you're in here, you can fit this through and, and, and tighten the rest of your uh, screws, and you can actually tighten them from going underneath here, okay? So the holes do serve a purpose of being able to at least access the screw head and hold it or tighten it. But going any further than this uh, right now won't get you very far because you're gonna have to take it apart. Now, if you did wanna put that camera bracket, this piece on, right, for the front camera that you're gonna be mounting, if you're gonna be putting a front camera, just take off the last two screws here. You should, well, you may, well, actually, let me take off a few more. Let me go back a little bit here and you can fit this back on if you want. I won't use it, I don't think I will, but you don't have to take off much more than that. And basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna slide this in, pop it into the um, uh, brackets there, pop, pop, pop it into the slits right there, and then uh, it'll pop in on both sides, and then from there, you can now fasten it down, and you now have your camera bracket, which it may help you, it may not, it may work for your camera, it may not. I don't use one, but then again, um, I can't say that that's the best method. I just don't need one because I don't think it's going to protect as much as I was hoping. Um, but anyway, so as you can see now, then I'll put the screws back on. And now we have our camera bracket. I still will not use the top one, and I would advise you not to use the top one. And then, again, if you're going to put your flight controller in, obviously during your build, uh, take off the bottom plate, which means removing the arms. And, um, and when you remove the arms, you'll have access to the screw holes there, right here. And you'll put your screws in there and then if you want you can do this and i'll show you a little trick that i do now these arms are going to kind of fall out the minute i do this but let me kind of show you what i do all right so when when i'm building a drone i do not like the fact that the screws will fall out from the bottom if i'm lifting it up and they're not fastened yet so here's what i'll do and you'll most likely when you buy a kit or whatever you'll get these parts that i'm about to show you so let me show you real quick okay because if you have them already and you know the height of your screws, like if you buy a kit from Cyclone FPV, we've already measured everything for you and we give you everything that you need. All right, so you'll have what I'm about to show you. So let's say we take the bottom plate off. Now, obviously these arms may fall off, fine. I don't care about that. But let's just say that in your kit, let me move this helping hands out of the way here. There's, it's kind of very cumbersome. So let me get this out of the way, sorry about that. Uh-oh, I think I hit the top camera. My bad, my bad, I apologize. All right. So, sorry, it's done shaking now, I think. Okay, so what I'll do is, let's say I tell you you're gonna need 22 millimeter screws, like these orange ones or gold ones here, right? So what I'll do is, I'll, when you get your kit, 
you can put those screws in and you can actually use these nylon fasteners, right? Because we're always going to have something to stand the board off of the frame. And what you can do is you can put those on, okay? And once that's on there, you're done. You don't have to worry. Now you can, once you've got all four of these on there, your build is pretty much done as far as needing access to the bottom piece or needing to remove the bottom plate. So at this point, and the only other way I could see it is if you are zip tying something um, like, or, or screwing the camera down or what have you, but you can do that from the top. There's a couple options. The main thing is to make sure that you get your flight controller board in place, all right? Uh, the screws in place so that you can start mounting your hardware, but you don't have to um, worry. The other option is that you just use the bottom plate, this plate here, and then when you're done assembling, then you can put the arms on if you want. I guess it just kind of depends on how much patience you have. I like to see my frame assembled, see what I'm working with, especially because I'm going to be adding the motors. And when I do that, I'm going to need it assembled anyway. So might as well go ahead, in my opinion, and get it all put together. Um, and then just take off the top plate when you're working on it. So let me show you what that's like. Because now what we know is that these screws won't fall through anymore. So as long as they don't fall through, we really don't have to worry about the, the uh, bottom plate access. And then we can finalize it. So let me just put this on here. Put your, put your stand on there. Go. My wings are all just falling off. But I did want you to be able to see what the frame would look like. All right. And so that kind of helps you with the assembly. Okay. I gotta get. My, I got sausage fingers here, so it's not as easy for me to get this. Uh, let me see if I can do it this way. There we go. I thought. All right. So there we go. Now we'll go ahead and tighten that last screw down. And we'll use those, like I said, those nylon standoffs are awesome, especially if you're doing one of our kits, because I'll have them in there, because the kit will come with everything that I use to assemble it, so that you'll be able to assemble it the exact same way I would. And in this video, this is exactly what we're gonna do, okay? All right, so there's that. Now we can go ahead and start putting the pieces back on. You see, because now these screws are in, right? So we don't have to worry about that. So let's go ahead and put everything back on, just like we had it, and now, Go ahead and knock this out. Okay, let's do the next one. All right. Okay, and we've got two more arms to go. And these arms are interchangeable, so like it doesn't matter which one you use, the front and the back and the left and right are all the same. All right, which is kind of a cool thing. I like, I like when they do that so that if you do happen to break one, you have an extra one, you don't have to worry if it's the right one. So let's do that. That's phone calls coming in. Sorry, guys. I'll have to mute that down real quick. Let me just do this. It's going to ring again here, so let me just turn that ringer off real quick. All right. All right, so we're down to the last set for the arms. So there you go. Again, we've only got two screws in there, but as you can see now, we can access everything from here, and we're good to go. So if you want to tighten down the arms, you can. I still don't really tighten anything permanently, but at this point when I'm ready to work on this, I'm just going to take off the top plate now, and I'll be able to do all my work uh, from the top and run all my wires and do all my wiring and whatever is needed, and I can still access zip ties and everything else from the bottom plates, so then I'll end up taking this off. Uh, 
you know, it's always a good practice to assemble your frame first and fully understand how it goes together. Um, and also make sure that all the pieces that are supposed to be coming with it do come with it. Sometimes you'll end up with extra screws because they actually give you extra or because you omit a part from being added that you know you really didn't need. Um, so let me do this. There we go. See, so now if we set that aside, right, we can just pop this off here and we can take our little camera plate out if we want. And from there, what we're going to do is we're going to actually start the assembly process of our drone and the building process, which will include putting on the flight controller, putting on the ESC, putting up the motors and running all the wires. Okay, so hope that helps, guys. I would use that as a guide uh, when you're building this first uh, kit. Um, build it once, understand your frame, understand every component about it or every piece about it. Make sure you have all the parts there. Then get it ready to set up by doing something like this. And now you can build it. And again, we won't tighten everything down fully until we're 100% done. That way, if there is something that's added or I've forgotten or you've forgotten down the road, you can go back and add it and it's not too late, right? And you haven't, um, don't have to unfasten everything all the way. All right, guys, uh, let me see. We've got the next video is going to be um, adding the flight controller and the ESC. So keep track for part two of this. If you have any questions, uh, make sure to email me at tark at cyclonefpv.com. Please also support us by subscribing to our YouTube channel, following us on Facebook, and I'm out of little tags to put on my screen. All right, guys, take care. Remember, God bless. Be safe. Spend time with your family. You never know when you don't have that chance again. All right? See you later, guys. Bye.